Hello, good morning. Hey. Good morning, Auntie. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. So, no, guys, today is Sunday, and unfortunately, I couldn't get to church this morning. So, I would like to, like, worship with you guys just for a hot minute i'm sharing something that is very intimate <laughs> because i love i love worship and i love praising i love you know love our relationship with god so yeah this is very personal for me um, so so i'm going to start off the morning blessed morning good morning everybody on the live i'm going to start off the morning with psalms 46 um from verse 1 to verse 6 i'm reading from the niv version the new international version that's what i'm reading from so let's start god is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble therefore we will not fear though the earth give way and a mountain fall into the heart of the sea Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a there is a river whose stream makes glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her; she will not fail. God will help her at break of day. Nations are uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice the earth melts i hope you guys are hearing me this is the word of the lord thanks be to god so guys i decided to share that little scripture this morning because sometimes we need a little encouragement i will need to remember who we are especially who we are in christ and if you're not a christian god loves you the same god loves you he doesn't he doesn't look at us like one above another he looks at us at equal and we are god is not man where he judges the outside he looks into the heart of man to see who we really are so this scripture is about our we finding our strength in god making god our refuse you know when we need when we have when we feel weak so we are like we are like soldiers on the battlefield and a refuge is somewhere that is safe somewhere that you can go so we find our we find that god is our refuge and strength when we need him most of all you know sometimes we feel uh, we feel like we're in the biggest trouble and we feel like we, we're not even too we need we're not even can pray to god because probably we do something what we know we're not supposed to do and we feel like god will never forgive us how can god forgive us but we need to remember god is not like man and if we fall seven times we can get up back and go back to god because some some of us we're not perfect we're like the prodigal son that sometimes we we'll ask for our inheritance and we'll go out and we'll waste it and spend it and then we don't have any friends again we don't have anybody to lean on only god then we we'll have to return to our first love which is god the church according to the bible good morning so you see guys sometimes just go in the word and then you'll find strength because i'm telling you Sometimes when I feel done, just open the Bible and just read something, take my mind off of everything in the world. And that's so beautiful. I, I forgot that I had troubles. Because the Lord tells us, you know, leave everything at its foot. He will He will make everything okay. And why worry when we can pray? Why worry when we can pray? I'm telling you guys. You see, if we dwell... In the most high place, we will never go wrong. Sometimes, sometimes we're broken, yes, and we are hurt. But then we forget 
who is God. Sometimes we forget, say he's the big man. Sometimes we turn to other solutions when the only answer is God himself. Sometimes we turn to drugs, alcohol, sex, um, um, dirty movies. We turn to our type of things. We turn to friends. We turn to our type of things, but we don't turn to God. We leave God for last. We leave God for when the string, the string busts, and when little tiny thread leave back holding it on. Sometimes we don't give God what Him deserve. Sometimes we leave Him for last. We don't remember nothing about God. You understand? And I'm telling you guys, whatever your season you're going through right now, put God in it. Whatever you're going through, if you're going through good times, you put God first. If you're going through bad times, good, put God first. You're going to indifferent times, put God first. Because sometimes, you know, a lot of us forget that God is the big man. God can turn that sickness around. God can turn that child you have been praying around. God can turn that husband, that wife around. You see, God is the big man. Mama say, remember he gave his only son because he loved us. So if imagine you have your one child, the one child, and even know if you can have another one, and you give that child, give that child to sacrifice, sacrifice that child. Imagine how you love somebody in order you sacrifice your one son. So if he do that for us, he did that for us what what why we can't just leave everything at his foot because we can only see that god has our best intention at heart and it might sound cliche and you might sound say well i heard hear that one one only per time but god our have our best intention at heart i remember like when i was just coming to christ because you know it's a journey when i was just coming to christ when i was 14 I remember telling somebody that, look, God only want the best of me, you know. So, um, anything will go so, any, anything that go like that or it don't go like that is God want it to be like that. Because he has plans to only prosper me and to make me good. I remember telling somebody that and that has been sticking with me throughout my journey. Sometimes I forget, yes. Sometimes I forget some, that my life is not in my control anymore. It is in God's control because I am his child. You understand? Um, so we, sometimes we just leave certain things. I remember the time, time, even this year, I'm not going to I like I'm perfect and, you know, I'm the most holy or holy. I, like, every day, fret. Every day, I'm fret, I'm fret, I'm fret, I'm fret. My fret, my ball, it come like, you know, when you cry till your, your, your lungs feel weak and your chest feel tight and your chest feel like, say, you can't breathe. You ever experience that crying? If you experience that crying, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes I cry. I mean, I tell you, work every day, I'm worried. Every day? Every night. Every night. As, as I'll stand right here. Every night, I'm a, I'm a cry before I go to bed because I'm, I'm I couldn't sleep. I, I, I struggle with sleeping because sleeping depression because I, I was so anxious. I was always thinking, so God, what is going to happen? But think, I, guys, things when I think about everything. I don't know what I don't think about. I think about everything. Some things that I'm not supposed to be thinking about, I'm thinking about. And then I remember my philosophy, my mantra that I always go by and say, God only want the best for me. And then I, I just start letting God let go and let God. Yeah, I even tell my mother this because she, she it must, it must, it's must a gen genetic thing because she ever worry about some simple stuff. I have to tell her, mom, let go and let God. You see, from we will let go and let God, you see how God wants our best interest at heart. Um, I was watching something the other day and and the person said, um, if you ask God for something and he gives it to you, that is God's direction. He's directing you. 
and when you're asking for something and he doesn't give it to you that is his protection and and i was like it's, this this was a little child you know this was a child speaking i don't think this child passed 11. and i'm like god you're draping me up you're pulling me up you're putting on my guard you know i'ma say if one little pit me <laughs> a child can say that and it makes sense and she obviously believed that why well, big big grown me and i'm 20 me we can't um can't understand this i could understand like when sometimes when you got guys let's be honest sometimes when you ask god for a thing hey okay probably you say okay by next year god um I want to own my own house, you know. I probably want to get married and settle down and have kids by next year. Okay, so you give God a you give God a time. You tell him what you want directly, you know. You you just straightforward. And then next year come, not child, no marriage, no house. Um, the next year come, no child, no marriage. Say, so I wonder what what is happening and god is protecting you sometimes we don't see his protection you know because we just want what we want and we don't care about the consequences until the consequences happen and and then yeah i wonder oh oh everybody get these things and i'm not getting these things what is wrong with me sometimes god is protecting you from your own your own wishes because sometimes god see and truly says we don't ready for certain things that we ask for him see and really and truly we don't ready for that car him see really and truly we don't ready for that house that family we don't ready for certain things you understand and he's trying to protect us so but you we want what we want are we determined and we're persistent say look here i that me want i don't care about the consequences i just want that probably it's the in thing so i just want that because it's the in thing it's what's popping now and we don't see the hurt and and what is coming behind that you know you can ask for that host and then you're, you're probably neglectful and negligent and yeah you have left the stove and drop asleep the house burned down probably you come out with your clothes and your back and your life sometimes we'll, we'll ask god for some things and he knows we're not ready for it so we just need to let go and let God. You see, from we let go and let God, you see that God will start, start manifesting in our life, start changing, start, you start fling out, put in, fix up, change up. You understand certain things. And another thing, when, when you are praying, you ask God for, um, like, you call it, like, divine like you can see things there's a d word that you associate that with you like i don't remember the d word right? if somebody in the comment can just type that so you ask god for like a vision like you can see like like it's basically like discernment i think it's discernment like you basically can see things like you can see things before it happened so you ask god for that because that is very important because sometimes we need a personal touch we need to see what is definitely going to happen for us to believe yes discernment you know yeah, exactly sometimes we need to see what is going to just a little quick vision you need to ask god for wisdom because you see wisdom in this day and age matter is one of the vital it's so vital right now because you see everything is turning back and front now back and front you understand everything and then the devil you know what the devil ch try to do he make a facade good morning welcome he make a facade so you see the things where god disapprove of that he says are abomination the devil try to put it up and flip it so society accept it and that's the honest truth so you see you see certain things that could happen 30 years ago is happening now because the devil is trying to control us like a puppet and some of us, some of us are falling in that pit 
that pitfall because we don't have the wisdom, the requisite mean wisdom to see that that is not of God because society say this, society say that. The Bible even go far to tell you that if you love the world, you cannot love God. You have to choose one. You can't have two masters. And the devil is is the devil is over the earth. He 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 controls the earth. And we can't love the the, the world because it's the devil's world. If we look, I'm not. I don't even have to go far. You can you just look in society. Just looking our morals right now. You see that it's far from God. It's far from God because the devil is showing up in himself now. He's showing himself now because some of us don't have the wisdom to say this is not right. And it's not that sometimes we don't have the wisdom, you know. We are so afraid of the world. We don't want to stand up for right. We are so scared of some what somebody else is going to say, what the world is going to say. We don't stand up for the right thing. And I will always be a person. I will always speak out against ill. Beat me if you want. Me no business. Beat me. Because I know what is right. You can't beat me. Yeah, he's working overtime just to steal, steal our souls. And that's so true, Auntie Darian. That is so the so true. You might work overtime for snatch your soul and then sometimes we'll fall into that trap. You know? Like today I couldn't make it to church. But my tell us I'm gonna wake up with a thanksgiving spirit. You know? Thank you, Father God, for waking me up this morning. Wake up everybody on this life. Protect them, Father God, because we don't know the ills of this world. You know? So Amen. I want to just thank God for just giving me a chance to wake up. Giving me, just giving me a breath of fresh air so that I can breathe. You know, so we have to be thankful for everything. We have to be thankful for everything in life, the good and the bad and the indifferent and the in-between. Because some people don't even have the chance. There's some people have a chance to say they don't want this or they want this or they want that. You know? Yeah. So, I don't know if um, YouTube is going to ban me. But, I want this is one of my favorite songs. So, Take Me to the King by Telma Man. I think that's her name. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces, it's my offering. Lay me at the throne, lay me there alone. To gaze upon your glory and sing to you the song. Please take me to the king. Guys, I don't know other words, but if if the music playing i can't sing along but guys that's one of my favorite song guys it takes me back take me to the king take me to the king you know and we, we're so fortunate you know we're fortunate you know we're fortunate that we can go to the lord in prayer and say god this 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 that that we don't even understand how fortunate we are to can be able just to go to God straight forward. We're not for God through no 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 medium, we're not for God through no priest. We can't just go to him in prayer by ourselves. We don't have for God through no statue. We don't have for God through nothing. We just come and we just talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God guys. Anything that you want, you write it down, you ask God for it. As long as it aligns with your journey and your, your his will, he will make it possible. So you see sometimes when person come and them say all different type of manner of things and them say this and them say this portion here and them say that portion here. That's okay because guess what? If God didn't want this to happen for me, he wouldn't have made it. 
And who, if God say yes, who can say no? If God stand with me, who can be against me? So all all the, the different chaotic um chatter in the back that is that is nothing to me because me and no say God put me right here so for a reason. You can think otherwise because you're human and you have free will. You can think whatever. But you see the relationship that I have with my God, I know that this aligns with my purpose. And I'm going to make sure. He gives me storage over certain things. I'm going to make sure that I properly do what I have to do. Let's see if we can encourage at least one somebody on this life to say don't give up. Keep pushing. Don't don't no matter how much time I fall, get up back and don't forget who God is. Don't forget who God is. And you see what I want, one of the things that I use to remember who God is, is that it's a God, he would have forgive, he would have forgave Joseph, uh, not Joseph, sorry, Judas, if he repented and for me like Joseph um Judas did do some did do a, a wicked thing in a man and not comparing myself to Judas but if Jude if God would have forgave him and he did that to his child God can probably forgive me for the local white lie I tell. So I use that I use that to, to, to motivate myself and to always go back and find refuge in in Christ. See Psalms 46 here, you find a refuge in Christ. It's me, me I'm not forget. I will never forget uh, where God have brought me from. I'm not forget that. And he has hold on to me all these years. He has hold on to me all these years. I'm not going to let go of him. Just like when hold on to me, I'm not going to let go of him. Because God is God, you understand. God is God, and we need to. We ne we can't even understand His power, and His man, and how He works. We just can't. Well, our brain is too small to understand that. And and sometimes, you see, I ask God, you know, God, if I'm too high, cut me down. Anytime I, you see me, I pass my little place, cut me down. Because I don't want ever to be a person that is successful and they don't remember God. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't want to be that person that them have everything in the world but they don't have God. I rather have little to nothing and have God with me than have everything, the mansions of the world. And, and the oceans of the, the the sea of the oceans or whatever and everything everything material I'm gonna have Christ that don't make no sense to me that doesn't make any sense to me you know and these things religion Christ have I've learned to I've learned to humble myself when I reach there fully yet I have a lot of working on to do but it has taught me so much and it taught me to humble myself. Humble myself because, you see, we have, we have to humble ourselves, you know, just like little children for us to enter the kingdom of God. We have, to, we have to put aside some pride that we have gained over the years, some ego that we have built up in us. We have to let go of certain things. If God just tell you for show it and say, Hallelujah! You have to do it. Because cause you put aside certain ego and you're too proud. Okay. Um, I, in high school, I was I was always the worship monitor. Every, I remember every Wednesday we have farm devotion. Every Wednesday, I used to organize some, a little group of ladies for us. And we preach and we 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 just minister to the children. I remember we have there was oh my school had some beautiful girls. There was one 
her name was Shannon and she was a lovely singer and she could she could pray. Me, me, I was the one that I was reading the Bible and preach. I, I was the preacher. And you have I will have another friend reading the Bible and I would do the interpretation. So I I've learned over the years what what religion can do to people. And let me tell you, I remember this one specific devotion. Um I was speaking about kindness. I mean, it wasn't me speaking. God was speaking through me to those those um girls. And and I remember like the next day, everybody was like, "Wow!" And they they started changing their ways. And I was like, "Wow, God, you you work through your words. You work through your words." Because I'm telling you, you see, when you have it all, you become so spoiled. And you sometimes, even if you didn't have it before, you forget, like, like one time you never have it. You forget, say, you didn't always have it. You become so spoiled and selfish. I don't want to be like that. I want to always be kind and giving from my heart. I'm not giving from, you see, how I... I you see, from I am giving you something that's no, just no, that is something I would want for myself. Man, I'm not ask my mother about me. I am not giving you something that I would wear. I I would I wouldn't want for myself. No, no. Mm -mm. I'm giving you the best of what I have to offer, and what I have in general, because. Mm -mm. I don't like when people just like. People, they say they're doing you a favor, and then, and then, like, they look for the worst something to give you. No, no, I believe in giving in your best, your best, your best. And sometimes I, I found myself in some pitfall because I always try to give people my best, and then I don't have nothing for myself. <laughs> That's the attitude, guys. If you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you give, 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 and then you have nothing for yourself. But then God just manages to carry you through. And we need to understand that it's not, it's the person that we help in life. Some, most times, not them help we. Sometimes it's some total stranger we don't know. But because of the good that you did, it, it, it just. It just it's just a cycle life is always a cycle and and and, and there's a saying that anything that you dish out make sure you can take it and i really believe in that so if you sow a seed and it's fruitful it will produce fruit if you sow a, a seed and it's not fertile it is just it is just uh we call it no it is just it's just not productive it will not bear, bear any fruit you understand so we need to understand that what we sow we're going to reap one day like up the life guys thank you so much like up the life you understand what we 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 sow we're going to reap it one day whether we like it or not so sometimes in life we sow some really terrible seeds really terrible seeds you understand and and some people that don't expect say something terrible is going to happen and in reality you sow what you reap so if you are a negative person you always keep on imposing your negative like views and your negative your negative comments and your negative just posture and people just know that you're going to receive negativity in your life that's horrible true but it's the truth so we need to understand to sow good seeds in sowing good seeds doing good deeds is one way of sowing good seeds doing you know doing fruitful things is one way of do it throwing a good seed so sometimes you know and the artist thing sometimes guys sometimes over throw a bad seed them it's not we suffer it's sometimes our generation to come suffer 
So and then you start having generational curses because of one thing, one thing that one person did. We know as this generation, we need to start breaking generational curse. Your mother can't go down the same road where your grandmother got you and your great grand come through to you and you want to go through it. If we don't repeat our children, oh, our children, will, children will repeat good or bad. Yes, that's true. Sometimes when we don't reap the bad seed in our, our children suffer. Poor thing, them not even know not what happened. You understand? And you can't see that your grandmother and your mother and your great grandmother go through the same path and you will see that you're going on the same road. Mm -mm. You get up, shake off that, go seek some deliverance because all of we we can sometimes break our generational curses is seeking deliverance from God Himself. Seeking deliverance and 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 trying to live in his will because his will is to prosper us and to make us fruitful I understand so sometimes we have to break through some generational curse root up some some buried curses root them up man and send them back to sender you understand me because sometimes it's not even what we do it's sometimes our four parents do and then we suffer suffer the repercussions so guys let us suffer have faith have faith and trust in god and break some generational curse your mother can't go through the same thing where your grandmother got through and then you are about to go through that root that up man send it back to sender have little faith have little faith in god I'm telling you, you know, sometimes we're not perfect. But you see, if we make a, a step, we make a step into the world, like into the world of Christ, just one step, one little baby step, you see, say God start helping us walk. It's just like a baby when them just start learning how to walk. They just probably then just need you to hold their hands. So God is going to be our parent that is going to hold our hand to help us walk. And then eventually one day we're going to get so big and so strong and powerful that we'll start walking by ourselves. You understand? So sometimes we just need a baby step into God like God's word and God's world. And then then soon after we will become so strong and faithful in him that we don't need any help at all we just can we just can talk to him and you know reason with him just like how you can reason with a friend them reason with him you see you see a friend and your mother and your, your parents and your little daughter your granddaughter you tell them and then them more can go sleep and your ear pss, 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 back. You see, God, huh? no matter what you tell him, you will keep your secret. You know, so invest in our relationship with God. Because he's not going to tell anybody your business. You can worry about your friend or your this telling people your business, but God, mm -mm. So you see, when you develop a relationship with him that you can just go to and you can say, well, God, this and this happened today, you know, and you have to take control because, boy, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening, but you have to take control, God, because that should have never happened, but it did. And then you start reasoning with him. And then you start, you start seeing that some things that you said are going to work out are working out because... You start investing in a relationship with God. And that's all he wants. He wants you to invest in a relationship with him. Because he made you and he's your Lord and Savior. You understand? So sometimes we just need to make a baby step. And, and just start investing ourselves into Christ. Because, look, I found myself getting so busy. So busy, so busy. We never have time to take up the Bible, read. But just busy, 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 busy like a bee. Just busy, you know, guys. May I say, no man, may I have to take a step back, man. Mm mm, can't work so. 
I said one one day pass, I never re opened the Bible up on my phone. I said two day pass, I not even open the Bible up on my phone. Not even much as to take up a physical copy of the Bible. I'm like, no man, something alright. What is happening? And then I see like every minute I start to feel some type of way. Mm -mm, them feelings there is not of God. Root up and dig that up. Something alright. And then I start to take up a little Bible. Probably read a little one verse because as God into me, me too busy. So I read a little one verse and say da 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 da. I talk to him and I said, the thing with me, even if I can't like, read a Bible, read the physical copy, I read the Bible on my phone, I try to reason with God, you know? It was sometimes, honestly, I said, poor God, I don't feel like I could talk to God today. I don't feel like I could talk to God today. And then another time, am I worthy to even be in His presence? Am I worthy to be in His presence? Boy, mm-mm. I'm just going to leave it to another time. And then I start procrastinating and then you leave it, leave it, leave it. And then eventually one day you say, no man, something is not right. The devil is just trying to keep you away from God. Yeah, sometimes God is just keeping us, the devil is just keeping us from God, sorry. So if I don't say sometime I'll two weeks, one week pass, you're not even you're not even open me a Bible. You don't even utter a, a prayer for to God. And I even wake up all this time talking about you're busy, busy, busy. You're busy, busy, busy. But you can sit down on your phone and find four hours for scroll up on TikTok and you scroll on Instagram and you scroll on Facebook and you don't have two minutes for Christ. You see, you see what I'm talking about, guys. God, the devil just try to just intervene and try to to make you feel like you don't have the time. When in reality, you're more than have time. Even if you're taking a shower, I'm sure that you shower almost every day, if you if not two times a day. Even in the shower, you whisper a prayer to God, because you were never too busy to worship God. You understand? Even for ball out, Jesus! And then we got to us make everybody think we're crazy. Make our near neighbors think we're crazy. But it, it, you have to find time to prioritize God. Because he's the only one that is going to keep us. You understand? And whatever you're going through, just remember to have God by your side. Remember to have God by your side because without Him we can't do nothing. Okay? Without Him we can't do anything at all. Okay. I just want to say thank you guys. Um, before before I end this live, I would like to sing another song. Um, I don't really know the words to the one that I really want to sing, but I will sing another one. Um, you guys know the song with the little girl she's singing it. What can I give to you, my great I am? I am not a shepherd, so I cannot keep a lamb. No amount of rich one to I can give my son. If I don't have much to bring. I give my heart. What can I give to you, the great I am? I am not a shepherd, so I cannot give a lamb. You guys know that song. Every time I, I listen to that song, it brought it bring tears to my eyes. I don't I don't remember the foot the word the song fully, but I love that song. You know. So, um, if you're on this live, I just want to um, pray for you, if you don't mind. Just please bow your heads where you're at right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I put before you 
these persons on this life i put before you their lives i put before your their family life their friendship life their professional life that you may play your part in it and put your hand in it you flip it and you turn it and you take over everything that is not of you god i pray that each and everybody on this life have a special relationship with you and can lean on you certain ways lord i give you i hope i give you thanks for life for each and everybody on this life i i pray that you sustain them they don't have dinner this evening bless them make a miracle happen for them because you're still doing miracles you are still in the business of miracles lord i pray that you sent your angels to encamp around each and every one of their homes. I pray for everybody that is feeling ill on this life, that they will get a healing that they will never, never anticipated. Lord, I pray that you, you clear each and everybody's mind on this life that is suffering from some mental illness and some mental instability. Lord, I pray that you open up your arms and give them a shoulder to cry on because you are god and we're going to find our refuge in you and we're going to find our strength in you father god lord i pray that even if you didn't make it to church this morning that we will have a heart of thanksgiving of praise and worship and of and of grace god because you are god and you you lift up we lift up us sorry and you give us strength and you make our foot not um hit against the stone you give us strength you give us wisdom i pray that you give us discernment on this life you give us a, a heart that is kind and pure and a heart that is thank giving heavenly father lord i pray that each and everybody on this life will be blessed i pray for the planka nation i pray for auntie donna the planka boss i pray for everybody that have been we have received help from auntie donna foundation i pray for Urene. i pray for daniel i pray for nicholas i pray for everybody saloni i pray for everybody on that program that have ever experienced your grace and your kindness coming through your servant auntie donna lord i pray for each and everybody on this life the four corners of this earth that you may bless them and keep them safe in the name i pray amen thank you guys for spending my worship time with me it was it was good i hope you 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 enjoyed this life and share it to your friend somebody that is because sometimes we suffer from some things that we're not even telling anybody so sometimes i love the word of encouragement is good you know but thank you guys for staying on this live you are so amazing you guys have been helping me on my journey i can't i can't be any more grateful towards you you understand thank you so much guys and i hope you enjoyed this video I, I don't even know if you guys were hearing me call into the axe. I hope you guys were hearing each and every word that I said. And, uh, you know, God is good. God is good and his mercy endures forever and through all generations. Okay? May God bless and keep you safe in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bye. Stay blessed and stay safe. God bless.